All right, what's going on? Week 8 rookie left tackle film breakdown video. I know most of our channel's Giants fans, and this is probably the best one you get to tune in since week 1. Andrew Thomas played really well, and we'll kick it off with him. But he played really well, and there's some little coaching stuff that was the reason why he played well. Becton played all right. He wasn't as dominant in the run game as you'd want, but he still has a couple highlight plays. And Wills was just very solid. He was very solid. So, I mean, good, these guys are, uh, you know, Becton and Wills have been very consistent with some bad plays sprinkled in here and there. Thomas struggled for a very long stretch. Um, you know, week one, he dominated against Pittsburgh. Week two, he gave up a sack, but for the most part, he was all right. And weeks three through seven, he struggled. And week eight, he bounces back against Jason Pierre-Paul, who was motivated, said he was going for their neck. Didn't really do much besides chasing down a play. So um, let's get into Andrew Thomas and uh, let's roll. All right, Andrew Thomas, week eight versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. Very impressive. And a game he needed to have. He needed to be impressive. He had been struggling of late. And I love there's something they did, which we'll start out this video going through. That protect him from getting beat inside. He has been getting beat inside ever since ever since the teams figured out week two. Like, oh, he leaves the inside open and his right foot doesn't power down strong. Teams have been attacking it. They coached him up and they gave him some new stuff. It's not doesn't make him a perfect tackle, but it helps him. It helps him from getting from looking silly on a lot of plays. So let, let's just go right through. I mean, I was, I was very impressed with him in this game. Watch the right foot. Watch the right foot. What have we been talking about these last five weeks? He when they when this move happens or he he's there's a threat of being inside. He's so worried about getting beat around the corner that when they do go inside, his right foot swings instead of powering down here, it swings back and it leaves a path to the quarterback. This week they said, hey, when they go to make their move, whatever their move is. Take that right foot and power it down and force them outside. You have the athleticism. You have the speed. You have the strength to win it on the outside. And that's exactly what happens on this play. Doesn't lean. A little a little bit over his toes. Good punch. Win. A win. Next play. This one is not even that great, but it's just, it's just protecting your inside. Watch. Okay. Look. JPP. Looking to go inside. Looking to go inside. And watch what happens. That right foot. And now it doesn't power down up. But it goes horizontally. Maybe a little bit back. And you are now square with the line. Instead of your hips turned inside. And giving him a path to the quarterback. That bull. He's getting better at stopping the bull. By getting those feet under control underneath him. Those, get those hands swiped off you, punch. Bam, that's a good rep. I don't care how close he is when the ball is being thrown. That's a good rep right there. Again, you got a vertical, and then watch the right foot. Watch As soon as JPP makes that move, watch the right foot. Powers down. Now you are forced to go inside. You are, you are, you are forced to go outside, Jason Pierre-Paul. Good hand fight. Hands and feet working together. I mean, good stuff, man. Here we got Indominus Sue. These guys don't get a lot of chances on the edge. So when they do, they try to take advantage of them. Punch. Gets them off of them. Hands reloaded. Bam. Locked on. Play over. That's Indominus Sue. Play over. Now, this ends up being really bad for the Giants. But nonetheless, Andrew Thomas does his job there. Here we got Jason Pierre-Paul. He's going to try and hit him with the bull rush. Power down. Power down. He's getting those feet behind him. I love it. I love it. Here we go. Next one. We got um, your, uh, Levante David. Linebacker. They're like, oh, I get my chance that this rookie left tackle has been giving up pressure. No. No. You don't get a chance. He shows his strength, those long ass arms. It's like, dude, you guys are not going to be able to pit linebackers on me. You're going to have to use Jason Pierre Paul or somebody, even though Pierre Paul's not getting the job done. All right, so a couple bad reps in the in the past game. This was uh, 
the two that you know most of them were actually in the last drive just good stays for i mean stays extremely vertical does the foot down just you got to get the punt you got to you you can't let him get his hands on that shoulder on those shoulder pads like that jason parapol's too strong gets around decent recoverability but not great not great i won't actually i'm not going to say decent so that that was bad um this one he had decent recovering decent punch again he gets ripped on that now i like that he's protecting the inside let him make you beat him outside but this is something he just has natural recoverability it's not the greatest footwork in the world but he just has natural recoverability comes out here and a jones who's scraping up in the pocket and finishes the play now jones ends up running on this play but nonetheless, he's not he's not just like flat on his ass when when that happens around the corner. Um, this is good stunt pickup. Now, these two weren't great. You know, Shane Lemieux, this is his first game. A lot of times he was screwing up the stunts because he was letting his guy get up so field. So this is good stunt pickup, but you just gotta finish. The same thing. Leaning. Leaning. I get that that's not, you know, the defensive end. Leaning. And again, another dumb Jones, Jones mistake. Um, here, just bull rush. I mean, this is a long developing play, but you know what? You have to you have to hold your blocks on these long developing plays. I mean, good. The, now the right foot swings back a little bit, but when it's a bull rush on the inside, you kind of live with that. And he and he pushes it down. I mean, it's not a bad. It's not like a really bad block. I mean, Jones is, you know. He's he's seven yards up in the pocket. I mean, like I'm 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 not mad at Andrew. Like, let's say this compared to the last five weeks, if that's the play we're looking at, that's bad. I will freaking take it in the run game. It's just some good stuff. We got a down block here on Indomitian Sue. Just gets movement on him. Keeps those feet churning. Just those feet keep churning, keep churning. And look where the running back's coming off of. Right off your ass, young man. Right off. Right off. Big gain for the New York Giants in the run game. Big game in the New York Giants in the run game. Again. Combo to here. I mean, just gets movement. Now, he ends up getting tossed at the end of this play. But that's how defensive linemen feel good. Like, try and make themselves feel good about themselves when they get their ass pushed back. It's like, oh, well, at the end of this play, I'll get him leaning. But look how, I mean... Nice wide base, short choppy feet. The base skinny's up a little bit, but I mean, I mean that's good. That's a good job right there. Giants continue to count on Evan Ingram to make blocks, which does not work. It just doesn't work. But that's a good block by the young. Man. And then on a touchdown, on a touchdown, you're running. It's a run out. You're you're blocking him out. He read he he redirects. You redirect. And you finish him through. And then you celebrate. And then you celebrate. It's good to see him celebrate. I, it really is. So, very happy for the young man that he put together a good game. People are asking if he's only good on Monday Night Football. So, very happy for him to put this game together. Mikai Becton, Week 8 versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Nothing too flashy in this game. Some good stuff. Um, the pass stuff, though. Honestly, I thought this was his get best game pass blocking. And, you know, we'll go through it. Why? But he just kept on winning the battles consistently. So, let's let's just go through it. I mean, keeps good proportion. Opens up his hips a little too, e little too early. And his feet, they look like they're too skinny. Part of that is just he's so big. But also, they, you know, like you don't really want that heel click. But he's so strong. Like his upper body is so strong, it doesn't matter. He just wins with his hands. I mean... Just this easy win. And I'll play it full. I remember in this week one video where I was like, I like what Becton's doing against, you know, Buffalo. But I was like, he keeps on winning back here, which is okay in the NFL. But I want him to win here. To win here. To make it just like a, a, a beautiful pocket on your end. And that's what he did in this Chiefs game. Like, that is what he flat out did. Let's watch it again. He said, nice, short, choppy steps. Not getting over his skis. Use that hand. That hand, come back, 
put it back on the inside. I mean, he's just winning the battle. Winning the battle. Let's see. He starts here. The battle is won here. I mean, that's what that is a perfect, you know, not perfect, but that is how a passer up is supposed to be won. That's how a passer up for a left tackle should be won. Again, just uses that power, uses that strength. He just con- he controls guys w- with those hands, with those hands and arms. He just controls guys. You would like it to see his feet not stop right there because then he gets the spin move. The ball's already out, so it's not a big deal. But you would like to see the feet keep moving. Keep those feet moving. And like I said, it doesn't affect the play. But that spin move wouldn't be there for that. Again. Short, choppy steps. Watch the steps. Short, keep in proportion. Punches at the right time. And he's just, once he, this once he gets this, it's over. He wins. Once he gets his hands on you like that, and you're not going to bend that corner or counter back inside, I mean, it's just over. It's just over. This is what I was talking about where week one, he would get beat around the edge a little bit. Like I said, I mean, let's see, let's see what the depth is on that. So he gets beat around six, seven yards, which that's not good. But when you're winning the way he is, for the most part, you can live with that one. And he ends up washing it back. Darnold gets sacked uh, later in this play. But kind of what happens is, wash the feet, that punch. And he just opens his hips a little too early. He protects the inside pretty well, but he opens those hips up a little too early. And... Defensive end bends that corner with speed. But again, I'd like you to keep your balance and not fall on that and keep watching him. But, like, that's not a bad, that's not a horrible pass rep either, you know? And it was good for the most part. There was a couple other ones, but I didn't I didn't feel like putting those ones in there because, you know, it wasn't like it's something consistent he's been happening. In the run game, it wasn't as spectacular as some other weeks where it's like, he's, it's fun to watch. But some good stuff. I saw this one getting highlighted. I mean, he's got this guy off leverage. The guard comes and finishes it off. So it looks cool. But I will say, that's that's more so on the guard. But good on Becton for when he gets that help to bench him off. I mean, look. A defensive end should never have that much space between his feet and the ground. That should never happen in the NFL. I don't care how it happens. And just gets big on him. I love it. I love that. If you're a Jess fan, you love you love looking at that. Here we just got a down block. This is fourth and one. I mean, just slams him down. I know he's slanting in. I know he's trying to pinch it. You would like to have not have that that false step. You see how the right foot it takes like a, a we call it we just call it a Barney Rubble, a, a Fred Flintstone step where he's like he's getting you know your. You've got your feet moving in the same place underneath you. But nonetheless, he moves, and there's a hole. Jets, run behind this guy more. Run behind him more. There's no reason for you not to be running behind him 75% of the time. There's no reason for that. This is nice. He's helping to 49 combo block. Like I said, I don't. it's an outside zone. I mean, like that's a tight end he's doing, he, you know, doing the block. And he comes in with that punch and just gets him on off balance. Just totally gets him off balance. It's beautiful. And then you got 49 here. Bam. Punches him off again. Punches him off again. Running back coming right off his ass. That's the way the Jets need to run the ball. Right behind this guy. Like, hey, we run in, we run to the right side of my ass or the left side of my ass. That's the way they should do it. One thing, now he has been awesome on these on these blocks where he's just trying to block this guy out. Like he's been he's been awesome. But I think teams will start to counter a little bit when they're doing that is not getting upfield and playing contain. Like I think teams will try and have someone out here that has contain because he's so good at just pushing this out. And I think they're going to try and have the defensive end 
like start outside and jump inside. If there's anything Becton has had an issue with, it's where uh, you know the defensive end is slanting in. Um, but this week he was fine. It was just this one play. Like right here, you want that right hand to torque 55 out, Clark out, and then push him out. Stays head up with him, and he's able to go inside. But nonetheless, overall, good game from Becton. Solid. You got to be happy with it if you're a Jets fan. All right, Jedrick Wills, week eight versus the Raiders. I keep on wanting to call them Oakland Raiders. I really do screw this up. Wills, honestly, is just the most boring of these guys to watch. Um, Becton just, you know, he just mauls dudes and throws them around. Thomas has been bad. Wills has just been solid, very solid and boring. But there is something I actually noticed towards the end of this game that I want to talk about, and I want Browns fans, I want you to look out for this in the next game. Now, this was a weird game. They only had 49 snaps on offense. He had a couple false starts. Um, but overall, good stuff from Wills. But like I said, there's some stuff I want to get to, but let's let's go through some of the good. Yeah, Wills is like the king of jump sets, which is, means he's not moving vertically. He's moving at this guy. Bam. One step, two step. Hands and feet. Hands and feet working together. Watch it. He, he even has that left hand swipe. Do you see it down? He doesn't over lean. Keeps those feet moving. And then once he's going around that edge, he's there to mirror him. Good stuff right there. Good stuff. Next play. So people have been telling me to play the play and then go through it. That might take a little longer, but let's see how it goes. Anyways, just a good pass rep. Just gets vertical. Now I've got I've got the right proportion. This is the proportion I want from here. I'm not leaving the inside open. I'm not leaving it for him to bend around the edge. Get around that corner. And just anchor down. Use those hands. You see how Crosby gets those hands inside and tries to break them out? Wills does that to the, to the defender a lot of the times. But nonetheless, the ball's out. I think this was a touchdown pass. Um, I should have left that in there. I should have left that in there for you Browns fans to enjoy. Next one, man, just hands and feet working together. Hands and feet working together. Just notice how the hand, left hand, the left hand is there to keep him, keep Crosby from getting both his hands on him, to break him off, puts that right hand, and then the feet. The feet click a little bit. Which I'm not a, I'm not huge on, but overall, I mean, just keeps the hands and feet moving together. Good stuff. It doesn't get bull rushed. Next play. Okay, this is what I want us to talk about and notice, and ignore my notification. So watch. He's gonna protect the inside. One, two. Notice how. Watch. Watch, watch that, watch. He sets, but he keeps that, he pits that right foot, puts that right foot back down to kind of just protect himself from getting beat on the inside. It's only for half a second. You see how he comes back in, but he protects himself from getting beat inside, which is honestly something I've been wanting the Giants to do with Thomas, and this might be something they do. I haven't watched Monday Night Football yet. And then it's like, all right, you're going to trust your athleticism to keep it around the corner. Now, the thing with that is that, you know, this is at six, seven yards of depth. I mean, let's let's count it, actually. This is at about eight yards of depth. So that's not great, but you can live with that over protecting yourself on the inside and letting your QB step up. It's a lot easier against a three-man rush. Now, he didn't go up against Crosby a ton, or at least it didn't seem like that. But here's something I want to see if pass rushers notice this and start doing this. Because Wills does protect his inside. I mean, kind of made him look silly right there. I wonder, like Thomas, where it's like, oh, Thomas, you know, you're not going to just beat him around the edge. And they were like, okay, we're just going to try and get him to commit to the edge and then beat him in. You know, like, it's, like with Thomas, it's as soon as they punch, they're going inside. Because they know when he punches, he leans. I wonder... If teams are going to start doing this, this little fake to get him to power down and then get around to the edge. Now, they're not going to do that every time, but just to where you have a better do a better chance of getting around the corner. Now, you're, like I said, you're not going to juke him every time like that, but nonetheless. 
You see Crosby. Let's watch his hands on this. See, he's going going to get around that corner. Takes that left hand and pulls to get a pulls him. Gets around that corner. Ball comes out. This one is one of the few times, like I said, where he he gets beat inside. Now it looks like it's like you yeah, these guys are sliding to the left, and then he's on you con you got Conklin on an island. So he's got all these guys out. He doesn't really know who to account for. And so he's like, he, he like he, I, I don't know if, he, if this is going through his head where he's like, okay, if he's going inside, I definitely have to protect the outside. Like he's just, the safety is coming around the edge. But he ends up beating them inside. Now you're not doing a, pun, a, a ton of game prep for the safety pass rush off the edge. But it's just one of those things where you open up your hips and get beat inside. But that does not happen very often for Wills. I mean, that almost never happens for Wills. So I, that doesn't worry me at all. I said, I think teams are going to start trying to get around the corner. Why did it? That was not the rep I was looking for. Okay, I must have put it. I must have put the wrong rep in there. Anyways, passing wise, I think teams are going to try and force their way around the corner with Wills, especially if the Browns are behind in games where they, for the most part this year, even when they have been behind, they've stuck to the run and and like played to their game. It'll be interesting to see if they just have to turn it into like a basic drop back team. Now I don't think they'll ever turn totally into that. Because that's not what Stefanski is, but I want to see, I want to see that from Wills. Um, let's go through a few things in the run game. This first one is just running, run, run out. He's blocking this guy out, trying to make a hole. Good first step, punch, and just drive those feet. Drive those feet. Keep that base wide. Push him out. That's beautiful. That's beautiful stuff right there. Beautiful stuff. This one, this guy's going to jump down in this gap. Wills just will, down blocks him. Good stuff. Just ride him down. I would like to see a little more of a mean streak on that. You know, because you don't get a ton of down blocks in the NFL. And when you do, just ride him. Like, I don't like, like, he plays it right technically. And I guess it is a smart play. But sometimes I just want to see a guy bully somebody, you know. And then here... I love this one. They're comboing. They're combo blocking to this linebacker. And for the most part, you would assume that Wills is the one that's going to come off, you know? So a lot of guys at this point, they're just, they're coming off right here. But Wills slow plays it. And the linebacker ends up playing backside. So Wills has to block that lineman. I mean, just slow plays it. I mean, that's as patient as you can be. Make that linebacker make the decision. The linebacker goes backside. So Wills picks up that block, the defensive lineman. 75 comes off to the linebacker. And after Hunt jukes somebody, it's coming right off Wills' ass. That's good stuff there. That's good stuff there. So Browns fans, I want you to watch out for teams trying to bait bit Wills inside and then trying to get around the corner the next week. That's your homework for this week. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll be honest, I enjoyed it a lot more because my guy, Andrew Thomas, played well. Um, it's just, it's just my bias. But, uh, like I said, Browns fans, you guys have got homework for the weekend. Um, uh, appreciate you guys. Make sure to subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Um, going to be putting out more and more content. Um, and I'm actually doing this on Tuesday night. Florida is very close to being, um, projected. We don't know who's going to win. I know there's a point zero zero one percent who got the vote. People got really mad at us for that. You probably don't even know what I'm talking about. All right, appreciate you guys. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. See ya.